So I made a pretty massive mistake with my digital movie library, my digital movie collection. Let's talk about it and how you can avoid the same mistake I made. If you watch prior videos on the channel, you kind of know that from a technology perspective, I'm very much an Apple fan. Um, I have a, an iPhone, I use iPads, my main computer for home and, and work, and this channel is a MacBook. Um, we use Apple TVs predominantly in our zones for video, we subscribe to Apple Music, yada yada yada, the whole, the whole shebang. And so <clears throat> I actually consider, as much as I, I have a Kaleidoscape and I'm a fan of Kaleidoscape, I really still kind of consider iTunes to be my, my main movie, digital movie collection, and, or iTunes to be the place where I source and maintain my largest and my most kind of forward-thinking library. Because at some point in time, Apple's shown they're going to continue moving quality forward, and I think ecosystem-wise, that's, that's my preference. So I set about over the last week or so on kind of an overdue uh, activity to sweep through my entire iTunes movie library and kind of curate it. I know over over time uh, a bunch of movies that I've owned have been upgraded to 4K and there's been new releases, there's been re-releases, and I haven't really been kind of uh, pruning and maintaining and managing that library like I have in the past. So I think I had something on the order of like 1,550 movies in my iTunes library and I set upon the quest to, um, using the Windows version of iTunes actually, which is the best for this kind of activity, I find, to go through those titles one by one and see what, what version of the movie do I have and has it been upgraded, is there a different instance of that movie in the store, and keeping a log of like what, what didn't upgrade, what needs to be upgraded, what movies am I missing, what's been re-released, all that sort of stuff. One by one by one, 1,500 movies. Took me a couple nights just sitting on the couch watching some TV shows and, and going through bit by bit. And so what did I do that was the biggest mistake probably I've ever made with building a library and buying content <clears throat> in any form is there was a good stretch of time where Ultraviolet was still around and we were kind of, and we were moving forward and Movies Anywhere supplanted it. And I was buying a lot, a lot of Blu-rays at, still at the time and redeeming codes. And I was buying codes. It's a really popular thing, I think, around certain enthusiast circles and whatnot, various forum sites and such, that the, the, a lot of the physical media collectors don't care about the digital. So they buy the movie on disc and then they sell the code. It's a nice way to kind of buffer the cost of the movie. Spend 20 bucks to buy a Blu-ray, sell the code for three, five, maybe seven or eight bucks. And so for the folks that don't care about digital collecting, that's a really great uh, bonus, right? Really, um, really nice thing to do to help buffer the cost of the physical media. So you can go online, you can go to various forums, you can go to eBay, you can go to all kinds of places and buy codes. And I spent a while buying a lot of codes and redeeming a lot of codes that I had on Blu-rays and such. And I missed out on essentially taking advantage of the most powerful and the key piece essentially, the key uh, platform feature of building a digital library of content, particularly for movies with Apple and in iTunes, and that's the free upgrades. Any movie that I procured that was a port from Movies Anywhere or was a, a port in where a, a code that I redeemed, most likely with Movies Anywhere, instead of being able to redeem it with iTunes directly and it ported that way, came over with rights that might have given me the HD movie in iTunes, but Apple doesn't give you the free 4K upgrades for content that you've acquired in the iTunes store that way. And so as I was going through my movies, I'm not sure on the actual count, but there's like several dozen, probably on the order of almost 100, I think, titles that have had 4K upgrades that I own the HD copy of in iTunes that I didn't get the benefit of that upgrade. And if I want the 4K version of that movie now, I have to basically rebuy it. Such a pointless endeavor. Biggest mistake, I should have just been buying my content, using Apple, using iTunes, building a library there. Codes and porting were actually the worst way to go about building that library. 
I should have only just bought with Apple directly so that I had the transaction, I had the direct rights, and I would have gotten those upgrades the whole way through. So now I'm stuck with a whole bunch of content in my library that's relegated to HD until or unless I effectively rebuy it. Such a pain, uh, just just a big mistake. Don't, don't be like me. If you're building a, a digital content library, you wanna build a, a, a digital library of, of movies and stuff like that, for many, many reasons, I still feel that iTunes is the best place to do it. The situation isn't assuaging me or, or is, isn't driving me to move away from iTunes in any way. But um, there's just so many good elements to the platform. They have some of the highest streaming vi visual and audio fidelity for <clears throat> that type of format of delivery. And again, those free upgrades and such are just so fantastic. And I, I lost a big value add of the platform by going the code route. So if you're really looking to build a digital library and, and you have any semblance of doing it with Apple, stop buying codes. Always buy your content directly from Apple. Another thing that I had found with titles in my library that happened as well is that a new version of that movie, a remaster, a repackaging, whatever, was created and put in the store. But in, in, in a minimal amount of cases, luckily this wasn't very pervasive, but it still happens. They, they made a new rev, or the studios released a new rev. Apple had a new encode. They put the new item up. Maybe now it comes with special features. Maybe now that version is in 4K instead of just being HD. Maybe it's just a better uh, encoding or, or a better re-release of that same film. But they put it in the store, and the iTunes store, and they list it as a new entry like a completely new entry. So if you owned that piece of content, you basically don't get the migration into the latest version of it. That happens sparingly, but it still does happen. It's kind of a pain. I guess from a physical media perspective, there's really not a whole lot to complain about in that way because when a special edition of, of a new movie comes out on disc, a favorite film, you know, you're not turning in your old one to get a discount for or a replacement for that great new release or that great new remaster. You're buying it again. So the fact that this happens minimally, minimally on a digital store is actually still kind of a positive or a plus for the digital store versus the physical, but it's still kind of a pain. So I encountered a number of items where the new version of the movie was in the store, my version of the movie, it was still in my account, they didn't take it away, but my version was kind of stuck. And if I want those special features, I want the 4K, I want the new cut or the remaster or whatever, I've still got to kind of get stuck rebuying it. Apple, unfortunately, though, when you're in this situation where you kind of own something, but but there's a newer version and you need to buy it again, doesn't always make this really easy, but there are some workarounds to it as well. So in some ways, the best case scenario is you own the copy of the thing. They decided to release a better version of the thing, and it is, in fact, a separate, separate entry in the store. And in that case, basically what I would do is just buy the new thing, of course, and then hide the old one in the account. One of the features I like about having a digital library of content with iTunes, you can remove stuff from your account. Technically, they call it delete, but it's technically not a, a rights delete. Within your iTunes account, within your, your library, you can hide, uh, hide content from being visibly seen. And it goes into like a special hidden area of your account. You can go back there if you ever want to in the future and kind of resurrect it or bring it back to being actively present in your library, but that's great. So an old old and busted version of a movie is, is in the account. The new hotness release comes out, you buy it. You don't wanna see two copies of that sitting side by side in your movie library and in your interfaces. I can You can go in, delete, hide it away, that old one, get it out of there. It's basically forever gone. And the act of hiding a movie in your iTunes account propagates across all of your views. So if you're doing your account management in iTunes or on a computer, then later on, you know, you go to watch the movies on your Apple TV and you're perusing your library. Whatever you hidden is gone from there. It's gone from your iPhone. It's gone from your iPad. It's the, the state of the hiding or the deletion is cloud sync. So that's awesome. So part of my curation was doing that. There was actually already some cases where I had already bought the new version of a movie like the Leica animation, the four main titles that they have, Kubo, Paranorman, um, and such. I had bought the, the bundle of those four films, but I had a couple of older ones, older variants from digital rights before. And so I just hid those old ones away 
and now I have the, the new hotness, the better, newer release with special features and, and whatever of those uh, Leica films. So <clears throat> in those cases, that, that's really easy to do in, in a great little curation tool that Apple provides. When you have a situation that you have a copy of a film that maybe you ported in via code or ported in via some rights in HD, and then that movie was upgraded to 4K, but it's the same entry in the store. I mean, that's really nice. If you had just bought the frickin' HD movie from Apple, you would have just got the 4K upgrade for free. Best uh, library policy basically ever. But in this case, you didn't get the update for free. And with the, the item present in your library, iTunes precludes you from just easily buying it again. They don't, the system doesn't understand that you have an old right that has some limited logistics to it, but the same movie exists with these better rights in these newer logistics to it. And you can't just go into the movie store or go into your iTunes account and say upgrade or buy and pay, pay the difference or pay the, pay the price to get that upgrade done and easy. So there is a workaround for this and it basically involves gifting. This is so stupid and really honestly, Apple, fix this, fix this. If, if you know that my rights are less, of a title than what's currently available on that title just let me buy it give me a button give me a reduce you know charge me two bucks two bucks three bucks and just let me pop it pop it up to the current rights but in any case they don't have it you can't do that right now and so what you need to do is actually gift yourself the movie so dumb but it works so if you go into itunes and you look at a film that you have this situation for under the different options that you can do since you don't have the option to buy it yourself again you can gift it, and the gifting interface will essentially say, uh, okay, enter the email address of the gift recipient that the, the code essentially, the gifting will generate a digital code that can then be redeemed in the store. And that counts as a core purchase. So this works within the confines of the system and what it means to buy and own something. So you put in your own email address, you, you pick the, the presentation of the gift wrapping or whatever that you want it to have for yourself, and then you basically buy the movie for whatever the current sale price of that piece of content is in the store, execute that purchase, 30 seconds later, an email will pop up in your inbox, open it up, there's the code, go back to iTunes, take that code, go into one of the redemption options, type it in, and then boom. Now your ownership of that film, of that piece of content, has been, it's been rebought, right? It's been rebought directly from Apple, it counts as a direct Apple purchase, it gives you all of the current active full rights and license and logistics that goes with that purchase. So you redeem that gift code and now voila, you now own the 4K version of the film in your library. So I, th that's basically the way to do it. I hope they fix this. They, they really need to make a better way to, to do this. It's really kludgy to gift yourself something and have to kind of work around the system to pay them money and you know and want to build a library with them. So. Um, I, I hope that gets that gets fixed in short order, but it works. Use that method if you need to. And that kind of leads into the last concept of, of building a library with Apple and treating iTunes as like the home of my, my digital content library is that the pricing policies and such are just awesome. And and so movies, you know, usually cap out around a certain number. We've started to see some iTunes movies, new releases, like the Batman up to $29.99. That's a little bit hard to take. For iTunes, I definitely like to see nothing more than $19.99-ish. But they run sales. They run sales so often. And so what my plan will be, and what I generally do, I, a lot of times I've got patience. I don't need to buy the new release when it's brand new. You wait a couple of weeks, that thing's going to go on sale pick it up at the sale price and iTunes marks or an Apple marks movies down on sale with massive volumes of sales like every week every couple days new stuff is up for sale dozens of movies hundreds of movies every week down as low as like 4.99 even for a 4K film so you'll see sale prices and nothing really goes lower than 4.99 but you'll see 4.99 7.99 is another common one and even like maybe 9.99 if it's a newer release I just bought the Matrix Revolutions on Apple iTunes for $9.99. That movie's like $35, $40 bucks in other platforms. So as I look to kind of curate my library and pick up some of these movies that I like, that I want to own in 4K, that I didn't get the free upgrade for to 4K, 
um, I'll, th doing the gifting thing, but I'll wait until I see them go on sale. Then when they're on sale, I'll gift them to myself. And the best tool that I found for kind of tracking iTunes pricing and knowing when stuff is on sale with a very easy to use interface is actually blu-ray.com. Yeah, use the physical movie tracking webpage to also manage and uh, help kind of um, make the most out of a digital movie collection as well. So if you go to blu-ray.com and you kind of navigate through to the iTunes sections, there's like a deals section and there's subheadings where you can see like just the 4K movies, you can see just the bundles, you can see movies in HD, you can see the TV shows and so on. And so they are constantly tracking the prices of basically every piece of content available on iTunes. And when something goes on sale, when it's been marked down, it goes into the list. They publish the, the new updates every single day for movie and TV show content. So basically that, that page, that part of blu-ray.com is like a daily stop for me. And so I look and I say, okay, what's on sale? Anything that I wanna grab for the library, anything now that I know in my list that I wanna upgrade and I've got a gift to myself, I, I can do that. And it's just a nice, succinct, easy to use list. And right out of blu-ray.com, you can click on a title and if you have your web settings and stuff right, it'll kind of open an iTunes web page in another browser tab uh, for that piece of content, but then it'll fire out and actually open that up directly in iTunes. Or if you're on Windows or on the Apple TV app, um, if you're if you're on a Mac, and so it makes it really easy to you know click and buy, or again go through the extra step of having to gift for yourself. So yeah, so that's kind of some insight and some tips about making the most of a digital movie library with a focus on Apple and iTunes. So don't be like me, forget those codes. Buy the stuff from Apple. If you have the patience, you'll get the movies on sale, $4.99, $7.99. You're probably paying like three to six bucks for a code anyway. So why would you buy a code? I'm so stupid. Why did I buy all these codes? Versus just buying the stuff directly from Apple. And I would have had another hundred movies in my library just automatically upgraded to 4K for free. And in looking forward for where the, the next kind of evolution and innovation is gonna come from, right? Apple moved from 720p to 1080p and they didn't charge for that in terms of content. They moved from 1080p to 4K. And if you bought the stuff with them, they didn't charge for that in terms of an upgrade to content. So what do you think's probably gonna happen when like high bitrate 4K content hits the store or 8K or, or you know whatever the next step is, if you bought all those movies from Apple the whole way through, history kind of says and odds are probably likely that we're gonna get those upgrades again to that next tier, to that next level of quality at no additional upcharge. And that is just such an amazing store policy. Um, it's just such a good policy. But again, you gotta buy the stuff directly. So forget the codes. There's some workarounds there for things that you might have in your existing library. I'm going to be hawking that store and watching Blu-ray.com every day as I kind of get my iTunes digital library reestablished and caught up with all the current releases and, and such. So if you have any questions, please ask away in the comments. I'd be happy to kind of give more insights or round out any of that information. Look for a whole bunch more about like digital movie collecting, streaming quality, and uh, iTunes uh, use and management and, and so on. Uh, coming up in the channel and let me know around these topics, you know, what you would like to see. So thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Look down in the description for some ways to support the channel and we will see you soon.